In this three-part series, we are going to talk about how to vet out a theme forest template. Who is this for? Well, it's for a service provider in need of choosing a template for their end client, or an individual looking to create his or her own website. The three major topics that we are going to discuss will cover design, template, and the company that provides the template. So for design, we're going to look at what are the gotchas in terms of the template itself, the aesthetics, uh, the look and feel. The second part we're going to talk about is we're going to analyze the template. Essentially, the gotchas to look out for in the actual template itself that you're going to purchase. And lastly, we're going to vet out the company. And that's the gotchas to look out for in the actual company itself or the developer that created the template. So let's get started with design. So I'm going to go to Theme Force. We'll select theme and we're going to start analyzing a couple themes. So we want to go under WordPress and I'm going to choose uh, popular items. We'll look at some of the more popular items, uh, popular themes that Theme Force has to offer. Um, I'm just going to select a couple that I've looked at in the past, um, but by no means am I endorsing one or not endorsing one. Um, these are basically just examples uh, to kind of demonstrate the uh, vetting out process that I use in terms of vetting out uh, a particular theme. So I'm going to look for one that is called Brooklyn. I know it's one of the popular ones. So just give me a second. Uh, Brooklyn. So it's this one right here. And let's go ahead and look at the live preview for the Brooklyn template. So, you know, my first impression of this template is that it's it's a very it's a very nice template. Um, they definitely have a lot of options in terms of the different uh, in terms of the multi-facing capability. So this particular template, we'll, we'll go over more of this concept in the second part, which is when we look at templates and we're vending out templates. But just for a quick uh, you know, explanation here, this particular template has different multi-facing designs. So when you see demo 27, demo 3, demo 28, what that means is that this template has the ability to mutate and have different designs uh, a different template so you're buying not just one template you're you're really buying a lot of templates um, because this particular template can uh, morph and is very customizable to look very very different um, so we'll just choose one and uh, I'll just choose the first one. So demo 27. So let's look at this public facing or this version of the template. And just by a quick glance, it is nice. It's a nice parallax type of website. Um, my first impression of it is that it is kind of image heavy type of website in that, you know, you have to understand when you're buying these templates, you can't use the images that come with the templates. Uh, these are stock images, that, and of course, they're going to use images that look phenomenal. Um, the key is that the images that you put in, are they as high quality as the images that they use? That's one, um, because they're using stock photos, and, and the stock photos, they're always, always phenomenal looking. Your photos, are they high quality as well? The second uh, thing to think about too is that you're looking at this image in the background while well, this is very it's a very generic image uh, it, it's not very busy because a busy image if it's put into the background it's going to even though it's dimmed out it could intrude with the content that's on top of the image so this part right here so you want to choose images that portray the same busyness as the stock content or stock image that they use as well as uh, you could take it a step further and choose images that dis that have the same color tone and that way if you're not exactly a designer or have that particular talent or that eye for it you can't go wrong if you're gonna copy similar images that they use uh, so that's something to, to think about um, the first thing I want to talk about is the logo. So with this particular template, 
the logo fits well with this area here. What you need to think about is that when you buy this template and you start using it, will your logo look good in this particular template? This is using a rectangular logo. Now I'm thinking, okay, if you had a circular, a circular logo or maybe even a square logo, it's not going to look as nice. So when you're buying a template, you have to be somewhat of a visionary in terms of, okay, it looks good when I'm, when they use their content and they put their example up because they're staging it. it it's, it's like the ideal situation. However, when you start putting your stuff in, is it still going to look nice? And a lot of times, uh, end users don't understand that concept. So if you're a service provider, you need to explain that, oh, we're buying this template, and, th and there's two ways to kind of get to, uh, there's two ways to kind of uh, work this out. You either make your content fit within the template that you're purchasing, purchasing or you buy a template that works with the content that you have okay so let's go with the example of we are basically looking for a template and then we have to make our content fit within the template so what that means is that we look at the logo okay the logo hopefully we have a rectangular logo hopefully we have a logo where if it's a lot if it's condensed to a small size that it will still be good it would still look fine. Some logos are very detailed, very uh, complex, where if you scale down the logo too much, you're going to lose that detail and it's not going to look nice. And you're going to miss some of the key elements of that logo. And that's not a good thing. And if that's the case, that could be a deal breaker because logo is very important. It's your branding. So with that in mind, it's not always a good idea, <laughs> at least with the logo situation, to have your logo fit within the template. The template has to portray a logo, your logo in, your logo has to be star, has to be the king. So consider that the logo is kind of a special scenario where we might have to not work in reverse, meaning having a logo fit into the, uh, the template. Now with certain templates, you may be able to adjust the height of the menus very easily. There might be a interface in the admin panel that with a quick you know number adjustment it could you know expand the height but you no know, that's on a template per pe template by template basis and you could definitely uh, email the template company or developer to see if that capability is available if not you may need to have a web developer to code and make that custom coding adjustment yourself. I prefer not to take that route just because um, that revolves going into the code and making sure it still works when it gets into like mobile views and all that stuff. So ideally, uh, one is to you know, choose a template where your logo could be the star. And it's not gonna dramatically affect the logo too much in terms of the sizing. And two, to see if you really like this a particular template to see if there's an option to easily change the height of the um, area. Um, <clears throat> so let's go down. So if we're going by the idea of we're going to fit content into a template we're purchasing, we have to make sure that, okay, this area here uh, has this type of alignment. Let's say we do want to keep this portion here because certain templates you it's, it's customizable enough where you can if you don't want this part okay we can take it out and swap it with uh, something else but let's assume that we can't do that well we're gonna have to come up with content for this we, you know do you have something that will fit all of this we can't assume that um, these icons will be uh, available or customizable typically they are but let's assume there is not. Do we have something that would fit well with, you know, the, the icons they offer? And are your contents going to be nicely, you know, three sentence long? <laughs> you know, you're going to have to really work with uh, an editor to try to find, you know, to try to portray your content in the spacing that's available. So in this case, it looks nice. But see, the, the you know, the theme provider, the theme service provider here, they're trying to sell the template and they're staging a very nice you know, 
content fits perfectly. And sometimes it's not going to be like that. Sometimes it's two sentences here, then it's three, and maybe this one has five. You're going to have to work it so that it looks nice, you know, three, three sentences long. Then we have this section here. This is fine. It's probably easy to, you know, create or the, to come up with. And down here, are we going to have uh, four photos? It doesn't have to be people, but, you know, can you come up with four? Maybe three. Uh, this I, I know that this part could be adjustable to have up to four, but can definitely be less than four. Uh, it could be up to five. Um, that's up to the the theme, uh, the th the template itself, and and do we have content for this? So again, the key is is that when you're looking at a template, can you have content or can you make content up so that it fits correctly in the spacing and in the areas that the template has? Um, there might be some flexibility flexibilities with the template where you can nix out a specific area, but just keep in mind uh, in case that there isn't. Now, you know, if your content is a type where it's like very very wordy and you don't have a lot of images, um, then you need to cut down on your 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 content, uh, your your verbiage. You might have to cut down the verbiage and make it only like two, two sentences long, and then for the images you might have to. Um, adjust for additional uh, additional funds to purchase stock images. So keep in mind if you don't have high quality images or images just don't work with the template, you might have to purchase additional ones. Uh, the images in the background here they tend to be high quality, high def, really large images. Um, you know width and height wise so you know if you have all these small images sometimes clients they take pictures off their phones and it's just like low quality and also like just the size of it is small and you have to blow it up uh, it could not be high definition so consider that if you're a service provider so and then there's a couple smaller mechanics that most theme providers built into themes that allow you to easily adjust it's basically the secondary colors like in this case it's yellow um, you should be able to change that but definitely double check with the theme provider say hey are, are, are these colors here the secondary colors and ternary colors are they adjustable uh, and if they if they are adjustable are they preset um, or are they you know adjustable where we could just put in a hex uh, color uh, and, and it could be any color that we want so for me how I do it is that as a service provider I will have my clients go to theme force and have them choose uh, up to five templates that they like the most and then give it you know give it an actual order like you know rank them from one to five which ones are are the ones that they like and then from there I'll take those five templates and I'll look through I'll look through them and go and I go through this vetting out process you know the design part of the template in the company but since we're talking about design in terms of design I will uh, look at the templates I would actually ask them for their content as well or look at their original website if they have an, uh, a website up already I would look at that and, and see what kind of content they have and then see okay does it work out what we just exp what I just explained does it work with the templates they're trying to choose or what they're trying to uh, uh, that they like the most and you know nine out of ten times two of them you can easily knock off like saying hey I don't see I don't see the templates that you've chose um, work with the content that you have it's gonna take a lot more work in terms of either coming up with new content or editing down or the contents you have and purchasing a lot more um, colors or I'm sorry a lot more pictures as well as the logo placements don't work or there's just some something about the template that just doesn't work out um, and then uh, typically you know a lot of these templates um, you know they, they are flexible so when I'm knocking stuff off I'll probably knock out like you know the third or the fifth place one very rarely would I knock out the first place one just because that's what the client really really want 
Um, so I typically don't do that unless it's really, really off. Or there's another gotchas uh, that we can talk about later in terms of the actual theme company or the actual template itself um, where I would knock out the number one place. But yeah, I would let the... Um, you know the end client choose up to five and then vet out at least from the design that that'll be you know step one now the goal is that I try to choose a a template that is about ninety percent of what the client wants um, if if the client wants a particular template but then mentions oh I like this part I like ninety percent of it or I like it but I need this adjustment done here and you're looking at the adjustments and you know as as a uh, service provider you should be able to gauge okay is this going to be a lot of work to try to finagle it in um, you might fur further follow up with the, th the theme developer or theme company that is uh, selling themes to ask hey um, is this particular customi customization uh, that is needed is it something that's built into the admin where it's easily adjusted with a couple of mouse clicks and, and some configuration changes or is this a custom coding thing uh, and from there based on the responses uh, you'd be able to um, at least gauge okay are you comfortable moving forward with a template where you have to make a custom adjustment like that or not typically if it's a coding thing I typically will stay away from it because it would be unsupported meaning even if you chose to do uh, go into the code, make the custom coding change itself. You don't know that later on, if there's a new upgrade or update to it, that it would revert the changes. You just don't know, even if you're using best practices of like using child themes. But that's more an advanced thing. Plus, there are other uh, better fish in the sea to choose from. Again, you have the clients choose up to five. So if one of them is requiring you to do a lot more work to get it to work, well, you got others to choose from. In addition, uh, from my experience, clients typically, when they're asking for these types of customization, it's not a hill for them to die on. Um, if you explain it well, saying, "Hey, this type of customization that you're you're, you're trying to uh, to accomplish, it's going to require a lot more work, and that may exceed our scope or the budget." If you explain it like that, uh, a lot of times they, they will understand. Right, because you know, a lot of it, it's going to be small pieces. Um, it, it's going to be like they don't like you know the logo to be, I don't know. Uh, instead of on the left hand side, they want it on the right for some reason. I'm not. I, I know it's not the best example, but a lot of times they're going to nitpick some pick nitpick some small stuff that it's it's not really a big deal. Anything that it's going to be bigger, it's going to be like functionality types, and that's something else that you, you definitely will, will scope out already in terms of the due diligence phase. So again, I try to choose templates that matches 90%. The the 10% the that's missing, that's going to that should be easily accommodated through the back end that's already built into the admin interface, like changing the font type or the colors. Um, Nixing out certain sections, um, you know, swapping background image that's a given, um, you know, things like that. That 10% is basically just non coding adjustments. And the last uh, tip that I have is that depending on the, uh, the company and the budget, um, I may already build into the coding process or the coding budget uh, three templates where I could just purchase. Um, the three templates that the client wants, I, I will build that into the budget. And typically, temp templates, they're like at the most like sixty bucks each. So I'll, I'll build in one hundred eighty already uh, in into the budget, so that I can purchase all three and experiment. Okay, which ones uh, offer you know what type of interface on the back end? Is it easy to use? What can it do? Um, I you know it it just depends on on the scope, of the project, and the budget. But my point is is that you know. I'll budget, you know, between one to three. A lot of times, it's just, you know, three into the code ready, so that I could just purchase it, um, download it, install it on a dev server, and experiment. And that way, when I'm ready to go to the next step of presenting it to my clients, I already know the capabilities of what the template can and can't do. So, 
when they want some tweaks and adjustments, I can tell them, okay, no problem, easy, you know, I can take care of that, or which one, or, hey, yeah, that's not really built into the template. It's gonna cause, cause, uh, you know, this much extra because it's outside the scope. So, uh, that's it for design. Uh, in our next part, we'll talk about the template.